demonstrate uh, in our MPA sample what needs to be checked out from the bag, making sure that you have all the appropriate items necessary to go and into the field and complete your MPA test. So basically what you want to do is you want to go to our scheduler and check out a bag, first of all. Uh, this is bag number one, and what we're going to see in bag number one is we're going to see some various hoses. And you need to make sure that you have at least two sets of hoses, preferably three. Oh, and we do have a third one here. Hang on. Uh, let me grab that. It's a little bit bigger hose, and that's one that we'll, we'll connect to. The next thing that you'll look for is you'll uh, reduce the valves. One is a, a metal one that you'll see here. And then there's some that don't really even have uh, reducing valves, or uh, and you'll just have a plain gate valve to reduce the, the pressure down to one gallon a minute. Now we're just going to show the components. So basically, like I said, we have a, a couple of hoses, the, the inlet hose, uh, the gate valve, the, the pressure recorder, the, the canister where you're going to house the, the filter, and then another hose that's going to connect the, the meter. And then you're going to have a little one gallon reducer that is required to meet the flow requirements. And that will, you'll insert into, the, into this hose um, and then connect the hose making sure that you're meeting at least one gallon a minute or less as you uh, push water through the, the apparatus so that you're getting no more than one gallon a minute as you make, make sure that the NPA is now set up correctly. The NPA test is now set up correctly talk about the toolkit now. So a lot of times you'll need in the field a, a toolkit because you'll come to various types of situations where you might need to tape the, the box a little tighter so no debris gets into it or that you might need to use some bailing wire or various things. So we're just going to go through a couple of things really quick. Basically in the toolbox you'll see a roll of bailing wire. Uh, you'll see some, just some simple duct tape. Uh, you'll see a pair of, of channel lock pliers, uh, a simple pipe wrench, uh, some wire cutters, some gloves, some Teflon tape, um, making sure that when you use the, the Teflon tape that you're allowing it so that there's no leaks occurring in your sample. And then just a couple of other simple items such as maybe an additional uh, uh, pipe fitting. Pipe fitting. Yeah. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's all that uh, typically is in the, the box. L let's just talk a little bit about once it comes back. Uh, what you'll need is you'll need uh, this to be placed into a pl plastic bag. Uh, just with about a fourth of the water still remaining in, in it. Uh, and then obviously the the micron filter that you'll need also to be placed in this plastic bag. Once that's uh, come back or you've taken it out of the housing, uh, you'll put it into an ice chest. The ice chest will uh, then either have blue ice with it or some type of ice so that you can
do proper shipping to a laboratory called CH Diagnostics is the laboratory uh, that we use here in the state of Utah. To talk a little bit about our pumping devices, we have two types of pumps. Uh, one that is used with a, a battery, you can see that it has a positive and negative feed to it. This is used to, uh, when you're using the battery that we have here in our, our storage area. The next type of pump is one that is uh, just an electric pump, you would need some type of electricity, obviously, uh, for this. A lot of times uh, we'll ask water systems if they have a generator, and, and if they have a generator, we'll connect to that generator, then using our pumps to make sure that we can pull the water out of the spring box. to make sure that the filter is clean, we're running some water current. What we're really going to try to do though is we want to make sure that this level here, the pressure is, is open as much as we can get it. So, although we don't want to exceed 10 pounds per square inch of PSI, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's reading somewhere in that range of, of tenor. And, and it's, right now it's only reading at about 2 PSI. So uh, although we're a little low, I don't think it's going to matter for this particular test. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come out over here and just make sure that the meter is running correctly before we actually start the test. So we, we've got everything kind of set. Now we're going to shut it down. We're going to put the filter in and the orifice in and actually start the test. Okay. So actually right now we're going to just undo the filter and we're going to place the filter housing and place the filter in. We're going to pour off most of the water, a little bit more. And now we're gonna just place the, the filter. And we're gonna now install it back on.
Very good. So now we're just ensuring that the filter housing is tight and secure with the filter in it. And now we're going to come over and we're going to set the orifice. Uh, the orifice that is going to reduce our flow to one uh, PSI. One gallon a minute. One gallon a minute, excuse me. Um, and uh, so uh, we've set that now. And then we're just going to reconnect. If I can get it to reconnect. There we go. And we should be able to now restart it. We're going to. want to make sure that we're not doing is leaving the source compromised. So as you can see, they're duct taping this lid so that the source is, is still have proper integrity while we're doing this, this test or this NPA test. So I we want to make sure that when you do things like this, that you're making sure that the operator or you is trying to minimize anything that can compromise the source. That's all. I'm ready now to let this test run. The test will run, making sure that we pass at least 500 gallons of, of water through the, the filter, and it will run for at least eight hour period of time. So uh, we'll probably come back in, in the morning and pick this up and then send it off to CH Diagnostics, which is in Colorado. Uh, once you come back from the field, um, you'll need to properly flush the apparatus to ensure its cleanliness for the next time it's, it's being used. Uh, so what you do is obviously you come into the mud room, there's a, a, a sink not a sink here, but a, some type of, of uh, janitorial uh, sink, and you'll turn, uh, you'll hook it up, you'll turn the water on, and you'll just let it fill up the canister and uh, let it flow through for at least about two minutes. 